seven minutes to eight then, and you might have heard at the end of July we were talking about two men who decided to drive an almost totally untested steam car at an average age, uh, average speed rather of less than 30 miles per hour from John O'Groats to Land's End. Well, they did it, and they're with me in the studio now, Dean Rogers and Steve Bolduck. Hello, thanks for coming in. So when did you get back then, Dean? Uh, we arrived back, uh, back to Daventry on Monday. We finished the journey on right. Sunday the 16th. And I bet, Steve, you were pretty tired by the time you got back. It was probably the most exhausting experience yeah. of my life. Because when we heard from you before you were about to set off, you were telling us just how high maintenance this thing was. Tell us what it takes to power this steam car for any distance. Well, I mean, just to give an example, on, on the run, we actually got through 5,000 litres of water. Wow. And how long did it need topping up? How often did you have to top every, it up? Every 10 miles. And it does 30 miles an hour, Dean, is that right? Yeah, the top speed was about 32 on the, right. on the run. Yeah. But on average, we'd done 10 miles an hour. Really? So it was a long day. So how long did it take you, John O'Groats, to Land's End? Uh, it was just over two weeks, and we were doing 14 hours a day with an average of between 16 and 120 miles a day. You must have been sick of the sight of that <laughs> thing, Steve, by the time you got to, by the time you got to Land's End. Um, let's put it there. I really don't want to see it again for another few months yet. <laughs> but you, you guys built the thing, didn't you, Dean? You, you, you built it right from scratch. Yeah, yeah. We, our business makes them and sells them as kits. Yeah. Um, so it's it's something we've planned to do for quite a while to raise the profile of the business and the charity that we've done it for. Are they, are they still popular? I mean, who buys steam cars these days? It tends to be... Anybody and everybody, you know, we've yeah. sold them all over the world uh, and there's no upper age or lower age limit. So yeah. it's, uh, Do they still look traditional, Steve? Because when I think of a steam car, I think of the old traction engines you used to see at country fairs with the massive wheels. They look a bit like a train and they're huge. Uh, this isn't like that, is it? No, it's, it's, it's really one up from a horseless carriage. Um, the only thing that it's got in common with a, a modern day car is the four wheels. Yeah doesn't even have a steering wheel, it has a, a tiller for the steering. Oh dear. Uh, and literally it's just like a, a, a horse carriage but without the horses. So no power steering then, Steve? Uh, that was pretty hard going too, was it? Um, it wasn't too bad, I mean, given the speed that we were going, um, it was OK. We got used to it very quickly. Did you think, Dean, you'd actually make it when you set off? Did you think you'd, you'd get there? I don't think anybody thought we'd get there. <laughs> I mean, the Steam Club fraternity all thought we were setting ourselves a real target. Really? Um, so we shocked ourselves to arrive, arrive in London, I'm sure. How did you do it? If it needed topping up with water so often, it took so much water, where did you get it all from? Uh, we took a 1,000-litre container in the back of the lorry. Right. Um, so the majority of the time we were trying to take it in turns to drive. Um, we'd pull over every sort of 30, 40 minutes into the nearest lay-by. Um, we'd, we'd fill it up from there and then top it up each evening if we could from right. wherever we stopped. And what were the people like, Steve, that were stuck behind you? Were there some uh, uh, some salutes and some horns, or were they pretty understanding? Because it's not something you see every day, is it? No, that's right. I think once uh, most people eventually overtook us and they saw what we were doing, I think they were they were pretty sympathetic. Yeah. We had a couple that uh, were a little bit angry, but uh, <laughs> given the amount of cars that actually overtook us, I think they were very, very few and far between. So tell us what you saw along the way then. Dean, what were, what were your best points, your highlights of the trip? Uh, for me, I, I was driving the car when we crossed the fourth bridge at uh, Edinburgh South Queensferry, and that yeah. was something special, really. It was, uh, there's not many people can say they've gone across that in a steam car. Yeah. Um, meeting some of the recipients with their dogs, actually letting us know uh, how much they appreciate, although the money we raised um, wasn't going directly to them, they they really appreciate what we were doing for the charity, and, and they, were, they were some highs. And then crossing uh, the Scotland England border was a was a relief, really. And low points, Steve. Were there any times when you thought, "Oh, um, I just want to go home"? No, not really. I, I suppose one of the funniest things I saw was uh, was Dean driving the car up a hill, <laughs> and actually being overtaken by a JCB. <laughs> so that was uh, that was quite amusing. And you mentioned it's all for a good cause. It is for charity. Just tell us who you're doing it for, Dean, and why you picked that charity. Uh, we're, we've done it for hearing dogs for deaf people. Uh, we picked that charity basically because we wanted to make a difference to whatever we raised wanted to make a difference yeah. uh, they're not so well known as better known charities like guide dogs and, uh, and and that was really our thought process behind it do we know how much you raised yet where did you get to uh, so far we're around about the 8,000 figure really we're hoping to get um, 
near a 10 with, uh, wow. by the end of it. So it's been worthwhile. It's a massive amount of money, isn't it? I just want your thoughts on this too, Steve, because this week sees a bunch of students from England taking on the world land speed record for a steam-powered car in California. They're, gonna, they're going for the 125-mile-an-hour barrier, which was set in 1906. If you struggle to get this to do 30 miles an hour, it must take some effort to get a steam car going at that rate. Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, now, now we've completed the John and Groats to Land's End, who knows, maybe next year we'll have a go at that as well. There we go. Do you reckon, do you reckon they'll do it? Do you think they'll break the barrier? I would, I would certainly hope they will, yes. Well, thanks very much for coming in. Best of luck with uh, raising and reaching your £10,000 target, although £8,000 is a massive achievement. Uh, and thank you for coming in. Uh, and if you want to see the car, you can, you can see pictures on a website, can you? Yeah, do you want to yeah. see a picture of it? Yeah, our website, steamtractionworld.co.uk, there'll be the videos and all the pictures. Great. and everything out there for people to download. Steamtractionworld.co.uk. You've got to see this thing. It looks absolutely amazing. Uh, Steve and Dean, thanks for coming in this morning. And if you want to go on the website and you want to see uh, pictures of that car, then make sure you have a look. Dean Rogers and Steve Bolduck, who did John O'Groats to Land's End in a steam car for charity.